Welcome to the Keel Hall Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea of Thieves news to cover today. So tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. This week, I'm going to be talking with two people. First, you're going to be hearing from Dead Eye Dre, who joined me for a small little bit of uh, conversation about Hook when we were watching that this weekend for the Keel Hall community. And the big guest this week is actually going to be none other than John Clark over at XboxEra.com. So, Pirates, we're going to be talking about Sea Thieves. We're going to be talking about A Pirate's Life. We're going to be talking about impressions from uh, Halo to Forza. We're going to be covering a lot this episode. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. But before we get into that, I have to thank the patrons because they are the ones that are supporting the episode. You guys hear me every week. And last week, I asked for people to check their their information, make sure that things were going well. And you guys responded. So thank you for that. It means a lot. So this week, shout out to Chateau Neuf, Cloud, Cosmic Johnson, Davram TV, El Jefe Esteban, Trickster, Jabaro 5, Kazia the Rogue, Lumpy SRQ, Dub Dub Goose, Evil Morpheus, Xbox Mike 29, Munchie, Registella, Rust Belt Kid, TN Professor, Big Bad Pad, Mina Fairy, Super Pack, Defergatron, Skinny Matt, Straw Hat Connor, Windsor Chris, and Zam Wow. Thank you all so much for your continued support. I put a little spin on it this week. Hopefully you like it. And Pirates, before we get into this episode, I wanted to let you all know it is uh, the 14th that we've been recording, that I'm putting this together, this episode together. I'm expecting a lot of news to come out of uh, Microsoft in the next day for the 20th anniversary of Halo and as well as Xbox in general. So I'm thinking about taking some time tomorrow after the announcements to actually record a separate shore leave episode to cover some of the stuff that they talked about and have that released later this week. If that works out, expect a couple episodes this week. So just wanted to give you a bit of a heads up. And with that, I think we're going to get into these interviews. So let's get to it. First off, Dre, welcome. Captain Hello. Deadeye Dre. Good to have you on. Uh, it's we're, we're kind of in a weird moment because we, we literally just finished watching the movie Hook. And mm-hmm. it was for just like a, a every month we kind of sit down and watch a movie. This, this month it was Hook. And uh, surprisingly holds up really well really happy with that movie um we were just kind of hanging out chatting with some other folks about it and we got to the part where uh peter banning at the at the time of the film is um going to a charity event for uh lady wendy or i don't know she's a lady lady lady. wendy lady wendy lady yeah would be lady Wendy. yeah uh so in in her honor at the very least yeah definitely and played by the the famous uh, wonderful dame maggie smith maggie smith yeah uh, so and Robin Williams is kind of doing his thing and you were you brought something to the the folks that we were there uh, myself included yeah. uh, the attention of something that I I didn't catch uh, I don't think anyone really caught it no, back then I don't think anyone did um, and I don't think that anyone would suspect anything given that mm-hmm. what we're talking about happened earlier this year back in February of this year and we're kind of teasing out that uh back in on february 8th that went from february to march 17th there were some charity sales that were available in the pirate emporium that benefited the great ormond street children's hospital uh in london and Mm -hmm. there's a little bit of a connection there that i was hoping that maybe you could kind of share with us the way you did in the, the video so at this charity ball that robin williams is giving a speech at it's for the great ormond street hospital itself and the connection there is that we were also talking about like uh public domain rights and licensing and stuff and interestingly the writer of peter pan uh jm barry barry left the rights to peter pan in the care of the great ormond street children's hospital which uh yeah see if he's just happened to have done a uh little collaboration with yeah which and, uh, in february we didn't think anything of it because rare does these charity events yeah for, for a lot a of charity sales before yeah nothing to really think of it just happens to be the next one on the list to do charities for uh and then come june we get mm. a very interesting review or like trailer announcing that pirates of the caribbean in partnership with rare and microsoft is bringing the uh, or Disney, I would say, uh, in partner with Rare and Microsoft, is bringing the Pirates of the Caribbean 
IP to Sea of Thieves. And speculation after the launch of that season goes rampant. Uh, mm -hmm. Everyone starts looking so at So many them. other possibilities for crossovers. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the thing that I wanted to, to, to kind of point out is the correlation between the treasure that Jack has, the captain mm -hmm. who's nearby, uh, the cap you know the 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 ship in the sky that that kind of has the uh the, the for the the fleets to kind of indicate where the fleets are active um there's these uh, originally there were little hints about peter pan then there were some interesting illusions in a pirate's life mm -hmm. now now i'm starting to think that maybe there's a lot more to this because it seems like an interesting idea that rare would choose the great ormond children's uh, street or children's hospital charity to do sales for um mm -hmm. right before like just months before they announce a pirate's life that has interesting things that could elude to the possibility of peter pan coming to see a thieves mm -hmm. um especially like captain hook i think captain hook is like the big thing that is alluded to or a lot of people are pulling a lot of connections towards in particular mm -hmm. so I, I just it seems yeah. like a really it, it was just one of those moments where um much like me and hook uh, I, I myself had an apostrophe and an amazing apostrophe, an amazing apostrophe. And I, and I wanted to kind of pull you aside after the film because, uh, I just, it was, it was something you brought up and mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that you get full credit for the connection because I didn't see this connection. And if it's intended, this, this is a really big, it's a really interesting tease. Yeah. Yeah. A really big tease that there's a good chance that any property from the Peter Pan IP could be coming to see if these. Mm. fully maybe like a completely different take on it a rare take on it yeah or maybe they'll take some stuff from hook who knows what they'd be able to do with it yeah because it, mm. uh, it would seem like a good faith measure from rare's part to say like hey we know that you know peter pan is is public domain uh mm -hmm. we would like to do something with that and in the talks they're like hey if you guys are okay with us using captain hook uh for sea of thieves we would love to set up the uh, a sales charity mm -hmm. uh moment for the great ormond street children's hospital so that a fair amount of the proceeds that come from these liveries go to help you mm -hmm. and that is kind of like a peace offering or, or kind of like a, a barter trade for them being able to use captain hook in sea of thieves potentially yeah so I'm just getting those feelers out there making those connections yeah because it seems it seems like an interesting idea unless it was just one of those things where at the table rare are they're, they're just sitting around in the studio or on on zoom i guess at that <laughs> point and they're just kind of talking about different things they can do with the game and they were bringing up peter pan and they were mm -hmm. like well who has the rights and they're like oh well you know the great great ormond street children's hospital has the rights technically for peter pan and they're like oh well you know that why don't we do like a charity event for them since hmm. since that's the case maybe that's kind of just as simple as it is uh it could be yeah but who knows it's, rare sometimes <laughs> it's true yeah they're really good at keeping secrets but that was just one mm -hmm. of those this was just one of those moments where like you said something it sparked a thought in my head i i verified it as best as i could mm -hmm. and i wanted to drag you on just to be like hey this is a really interesting thing to think about so mm -hmm. it is. um but that was that was pretty much it uh just wanted to keep it short and, and quick because i've got um a, an actual uh the, the the actual episode is actually with john john clark from xbox era so that's coming out uh, after after our little chat here, uh, so folks will be able to listen to this. Enjoy that. Um, so it, it's a it's a really interesting episode too, especially with us talking about a pirate's life and stuff. Uh, it'll mm. it'll be really fun to to dive into, and I haven't released it yet, so I know I'm kind of leaving you in the dark here. Um, but before we head out, I did want to give you an opportunity uh, once again just to kind of plug your stuff and see if I can get some more eyeballs onto uh, your content. Um, yeah, sure. Um, so the main place that I upload my writing and that I help out for is Golden Sands blog post, uh, which you can find on Medium. If you give that a Google, or you can find it on Twitter at Golden Sands blog. Uh, for my own personal stuff, it's uh, Smugglers Dre on the Twitters. Um, I also help out with uh, the folks at the Ancient Isles University uh, and Merfolk Lullaby. And I stream occasionally at um, Twitch Dead Eye Dre. Or one word. Awesome. Can watch me do ridiculous voices for visual novel games. <laughs> I, I do like it uh <laughs> awesome well thanks for yeah. for jumping in with me um i no know problem. it's it's late over I there sparked many thoughts in people's heads 
I do too. I really yeah. hope that, that some folks were just like, what? A little bit what? of lighthearted speculation. Yeah. Yeah. That mm -hmm. is, that. I do want to point that out too. We have no idea. So we were just yeah. chit chatting while watching the movie and it just kind of was like, maybe we should. I want to talk about this. Mm. I want to see, I want to see what other people think about this. Hmm. It is a good hmm, kind of moment too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, Dre. I appreciate you dropping by. No problem. Always, always happy. Awesome. <laughs> your amazon us link and then i'll just find the matching one in the uk easy 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 uh awesome well um as far as the run of the show obviously i want to get introductions in for you i want to talk about uh what you've been playing because i figure you've probably been playing fours of five uh and and i have too so i want to gush a little bit about that because i've just been loving it um but then i definitely want to talk a little bit about um xbox era what you guys do I really want to get into uh, the show notes for sure, but I also want to make sure that we talk about A Pirate's Life because that's one of the main goals that I wanted to bring you on because it's such a differing opinion from most of the people that uh, listen to the podcast. And I think that that's a fun conversation to have because I, I love having differing opinions. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm ready and willing to defend my uh, my hill. I'll die on it. <laughs> but it's, it's funny because if you, if you look at my actual review for Sea of Thieves, the game, like mm -hmm. I did a video review in like 20... 2020 where i was like look at everything that's been added this is nuts and then i talked about why it's such yeah. a unique game and i think um craig duncan was mm. like this is a great review and he retweeted it and then funnily enough the sea of thieves youtube channel did their own here's everything we've added since and i was like yeah yeah i inspired it i'll take that <laughs> but um yeah, it's 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 a weird position to have. So I'm looking forward to getting into it. That's cool. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it as well too because I, I I I know that you'd love the game. So it's it's more so what was wrong with it compared to um most of the other content. But let's let's yeah. let's save it. We'll get into this. Um, John, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, for those of you that don't know you, you're the editor in chief over at Xbox Era, one of the the best websites for Xbox news for folks that are looking to stay up on content for th for folks looking to uh, get reviews for games that are coming out on the Xbox system. Uh, we're on a Sea of Thieves podcast right now, but before we get into the Sea of Thieves content, um, I wanted to lay out a couple things for folks that might be listening to this wondering what I'm going to be covering. Uh, we're going to be covering the latest patch, talking about the Emporium things like that, for sure. I haven't gotten a chance to listen to the podcast. If many of you have talked to me recently, you know that uh, I have been um, at home on vacation. And when I'm on vacation, I, I never sit down and listen to podcasts. So I haven't even taken an opportunity to listen to the latest Sea of Thieves official podcast. Uh, so we're not going to be covering that this episode that'll be next episode when i talk about that and i'll dive into what they talked about because i did hear some interesting things but this episode uh, i brought on john because not only is he the editor-in-chief of xbox era but he has a very interesting take on a pirate's life as a fan of sea of thieves that i wanted to drill down into because uh from my perspective from a lot of your folks is, or from your your perspective as fans you generally all feel like a pirate's life was a big win uh we talked about it a couple episodes ago for the community episode everyone and said that season three was the best season so far out of all the seasons that they'd done. And I wanted to bring in a, a, a real critical eye to A Pirate's Life based on his uh, experience. So, John, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thank you. I, I'm very well, and I appreciate the, the very kind words that, that you use to describe Xbox era. Uh, it's, it's nice to hear so many nice things said about it. It's really, really cool. Yeah. And it's a pleasure to be here. I, I co-host my podcast with someone that absolutely hates Sea of Thieves. And whenever it comes up, he eye rolls and, you know, and he makes jokes about how, you know, and I'm like, I can't talk about Sea of Thieves with you. So it's nice to be able to come to a <laughs> podcast where I can relax and enjoy how much I love this game. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a passion for me. It's a passion for a lot of folks, but I recognize that it is it is a very niche taste for most folks. Uh, the, <laughs> the the guns aren't the best, and uh, there's not really a whole lot of like things to level up. You know, there's not like that that consistent grind. It, you know what? I, as a as a as a parent of two kids uh, with lots and lots of things going on, uh, I love that aspect of Sea of Thieves has never been a source of criticism for me. The gunplay, yeah, we, we could talk about how that is middling at best, but that's not, the gunplay isn't the point of Sea of Thieves. And, you know, I know you mentioned my uh, my differing opinion on a pirate's life. So 
you know, we, we can get to the, get into that when you want to get into that, but um, there are aspects <laughs> of that gunplay that that fed into that opinion somewhat. Which but, is... Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll go with the flow. <laughs> yeah, that's a, and that's a that's a fair criticism for sure. Um, I before I would dive into that, I wanted to talk a little bit about Xbox Air because you you've been doing the podcast uh, for Xbox Air. You've also been doing a Halo podcast. Uh, you also have the the website rolling out reviews on a regular basis. So. Uh, I wanted to dive a little bit into Forza 5, because uh, last episode I was talking oh. a lot about Far Cry 6 with some Sea of Thieves streamers, but Forza 5 uh, has just, it's its really, really enthralled me. I didn't expect that, but uh, this is probably the first racing game since Gran Turismo 2 that has just sucked me in wholeheartedly. It's got its hooks in you deep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's... Um... It's funny, I am not a racing guy. Like, I don't, I don't really do car <laughs> games. And uh, I, I cast my mind back to Forza Horizon 2. And do you remember the intro? They always have a really good intro, and Forza Horizon 5 is no different. This epic, you know, across different vistas with cars dropping out of planes, it's absolutely bonkers. And it's, it feels right. It's a celebration of car culture, but it's also a celebration of how fun video games can be. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember distinctly Forza Horizon 2, I, you know, I did that intro and then suddenly it went from cutscene to fluently into controlling the car. And I was like, oh, this is, and the music was perfect. And I think that this is just, Forza Horizon 5 is just another great evolution on an already fantastic series. So it's very hard to find criticism for it. You know, there are things I would niggle at, like, you know, the map becomes still filled with stuff. Um, but they've put systems in place to kind of let you focus on the stuff you enjoy. So goodbye drift zones, for example. I'm never going to go and do a drift zone. But the presentation, the the sound, the graphical fidelity, it is, uh, it's nice to see Microsoft in the running for a game of the year with a racing game where people are being like, oh, racing games never win game of the year. I have a feeling Forza's got a good chance. Just, it's just in there in the nick of time in terms of release schedule. It's a, it's a really great title. Yeah, yeah, I think this is really a, a beautiful feather in the cap of of Xbox. Their their games. This is like the first major exclusive they've launched, and I I think it's just the fact that the first year of the generation that that for series consoles they're hitting it with Forza Five, and you know we're going to be having Halo Infinite in a month, and I feel really positive about that as well. It feels like it's it's doing something that is unique to Halo and but still trying to keep as much of that, that kind of history and legacy behind it. I'm, I've played through Halos, uh, most of the Halos. I've been working my way through them this year because I wanted were, to kind of... Were you new to them up until now, like I, playing through them? Surprisingly enough, um, yes and no, because my Xbox history goes from 2001 to about 2004. And in about 2004, <laughs> a little game called World of Warcraft came out. And then that, <sighs> that game had me till about... 2013 roughly it still it still has my younger brother i haven't seen him for a very long time oh man because of well i have i'm i jest but he uh you yeah, seen he, his avatar I, more he's constantly on that damn thing <laughs> and he's finally funnily enough he's bought an xbox he's just managed to secure a, oh, a series great. x in the uk and he's like what do i need what do i need and i'm like you know this thing doesn't have warcraft on it right and he's like <laughs> Yeah, I think it's about time I give it a change. So, yeah, it's uh, I can understand the trap that is Warcraft. It could just suck a few years out of your life. Yeah, yeah. But it, what's ironic is uh, I've always dabbled a little bit in the Xbox world. So I had the original Xbox, and I loved Halo, and I loved Halo 2. And then I got uh, an Xbox 360 well after its heyday um, because uh, I just I wanted to get a, a console. I figured a console would get me off the computer more and I'd be able to be like down in the living room. My wife would be able to see me uh, instead <laughs> of me just like illuminated by the glow of, of computer monitors. So uh, yeah. we, we got the Kinect and the 360 and I never I never went into Halo 3 or Halo 4 or ODST or Ro Reach. None of those. I never went into them. It was all about Gears and Mass Effect. And that was that oh. was the short experience that I had with the 360. So I mean, yeah, Mass Effect, though, I mean, I, I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've just finished more or less the the, the remastered trilogy. Yeah. Um, like hands down one of the best video game trilogies ever made and i really want an hbo budget mm. mass effect tv show That'd i really cool. do that it needs to happen at some point in my lifetime before i die they um, can do it. but yeah i mean you're playing through them are you in are you enjoying all the halos like what's been your favorite so far that you've played since 
since that break? Gosh, it's, I would have to say that so far, I think, and, and bear in mind, I haven't played five and I'm almost done with four. I think I'm like three, two thirds of the way through four. Uh, but so far, I, I gotta say three is probably the most encompassing story with the best gameplay that I've played. I love a f what four is doing right now, though. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I playing through one surprisingly holds up really well. I was really, oh. really impressed with that. Um, yeah, the, the gunplay is still great. Yeah. And two, I didn't like. Uh, I thought that the that the swap between Covenant and Chief was was cool. And, you know, I, I'm a huge Keith David fan, but I hated how weird that story was. Like, it just didn't feel like a cohesive story. And I went and I, I did some research and found out about, like, all the production issues and, and all the promises. And <laughs> yeah. So, like, looking back, and it, it, hindsight's 2020, it's like, oh, yeah, okay. That explains a lot yeah. about this game. I can understand. Sure. I can understand. Um, and I, I played Reach uh, co-op, so I feel like I'm, I might have missed out on some of the, the major story points. Uh, but I just didn't I didn't connect with those characters because they they kind of threw them at me. And as someone who grew up at the launch of the or, you know, spent the the launch of the Xbox reading Halo Reach the book in, in line with Halo Combat Evolved. And I'm like, well, this is a really great story about, uh, you know, Chief and, and just his his life growing up as a child in this in this system and stuff. So Reach was a very different thing for me going into the game. Yeah, I, I felt the same way when Reach came back back in 2010. I was like, oh, they're making Reach. The book is so good. And then, oh, they've made a completely new story with completely new things. Yeah. And it completely throws what happened in that book kind of out the window. It's an odd decision. But Bungie, I think Bungie did what, 343, you know, they're both at opposite ends of the spectrum. Bungie was like, the games are the games. You know, if you want to indulge in the extra lore that exists in books, go nuts. But it's not going to inform the games. Whereas 343 went too far into the lore, and unless you've read a book or mm. two or five, you know, Halo 4 in particular, I'd be very curious to get your thoughts when you get to the end, because some of it you're like, who's this guy? What are these people? Yeah. What is this person? And it's, <laughs> you know, unless you've read the book, you're kind of like lost, and I think that's a fair criticism. Uh, I could... I could talk about Halo Five, but hey, this is a Sea of Thieves podcast, right? I don't want to. I don't want to bore you about Halo. I, I like lots of games, but yeah. yeah. So yeah, I've been I've been loving my time with Forza. Um, I've been loving my time with Halo. Uh, sea of Thieves has been has been really fun recently. Uh, we just finished up the the Fury of the Damned event, and we got those done. Uh, and we're moving in through the rest of season four because that's ending uh, at the end of the first week of December. Um, uh, and I'm trying to think if I'm oh, I don't want to move on before I miss out on anything with Xbox era. I, uh, I want to uh, let, let's get a little bit about Xbox era because you guys got something that you can tease, but nothing that you can oh, reveal. Right. I'll, I'll give you I'll give you the, uh, the nutshell. So um, for the audience that has no idea or has never heard of us, uh, we're a collection of gamers from across the world that thought we could be uh, as good at doing video content and reviews as some of the big players in the industry, you know, your IGNs and your Euro gamers and things like that. Um, we're really lucky in that the team we've got is fantastic. It all started because I wanted to do a podcast and I had a friend in Australia that was like, yeah, let's do this. And then I forced a website upon him and then we found more people and we just ballooned. And we're here now, two and a bit years later, um, and across all of our socials and stuff like that, we've got like 120K people that interact with us in some capacity, be it on Instagram or YouTube or Twitter. Um, we've got a really cool community. We started our own forum. Um, and it's all about building a home for, for people that enjoy the Xbox platform. And the primary reason for it was when we looked out, especially, you know, 2013 Xbox One generation was not a great gen for Xbox. Sea of Thieves is a remarkable diamond highlight in this generation yeah. overall. Um, and it was, it wasn't nice to discuss the platform. If you did love it, regardless of its faults or the fact that it was less powerful on 900 P, whatever criticism you wanted to chuck out. So it was about just being able to have a place where you could have conversation with people and actually enjoy it without the trolling and the, you know, and the, the console war stuff. It's just, it's pointless. Yeah. So that's what we set out to do and it's doing well. Um, we've got a really exciting project that we just threw up a very big teaser page um, and you can check it out on Twitter and it's on, it's on the main website, xboxzero.com. 
uh, I would advise, when does this go out in terms of being released to the wide, wide world? So for uh, for listeners, we are recording on Friday the 12th. Uh, you guys are going to get this on the 15th, which is... It's, it's Monday. Monday. It's good and bad because I am I really like... <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen on the on the 15th because it's the, the 20th anniversary of Xbox and it Halo. Is. And I want to talk about a whole bunch of that stuff, but it's it's like I don't have I don't have the outlet right now. It's all CFE, yeah. so uh, I'm excited, yeah. but there's nothing to really know. But everyone will be hearing this on the 15th. Well, in that case, uh, you definitely want to check out XboxZero.com on the 15th because we've got something that we've been working on for a year uh, mm. that we're going to show. Um, and we're very keen to see the world's reaction because without being biased, I think it's a pretty big deal, but that's it. I'll leave it there because <laughs> I can't say too much else. Um, but yeah, very excited. And it, you know, it's, it's lovely being able to come on other podcasts like this and actually relax a little bit. And, you know, I've done my spiel about Xbox here. I can just relax now and talk about pirates because that's yeah. cool. Yeah, I, I'm I'm looking forward to all that good stuff. It's it's exciting time for for the Xbox fans. Uh, sea of Thieves is one of those really fun games that I originally picked it up on PC because I was I was recording uh, with Nintendo people and I was streaming Nintendo content until about 2018 when I saw that that open beta for Sea of Thieves and then I was like, oh oh, you want D- Nintendo wants to give me Donkey Kong and Yoshi and Kirby. They don't no more Mario's or, or Zelda's for now. No Metroids. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna go check out this pirate game. I'll BRB, and I just never went yeah. back. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's a game. It is. It is. The, I've said it before. I'll say it again. It is the most unique mm-hmm. uh, title to have. I I think it's probably Rare's best game. I know that's might be a travesty to some people for me to say that. Um, but it's the most unique game to come out of the entire generation of the Xbox One. It is the singular best thing that yeah. the platform has had, and I love it for that. Yeah, they've done they've done some things that I don't think other companies are brave enough to do um, because they've really tried to build something that is that is just for the sake of it being a thing. They aren't, and I think that's kind of what Rare's bag is. Rare, especially with uh, some of the teases and stuff that we've had with Everwild, everything yeah. about like Sea of Thieves and, and Everwild right now speaks to what I think Rare as a company wants to do, which is just make games. They just want to make interesting, fun games. They aren't trying to bait you in with with uh loot boxes or uh thank god you know like predatory practices that most of us can rationalize but there's definitely a subsect of people that have like habitual issues that you know if you're playing call of duty or you're playing Fortnite, there's always that that sense of like there's always something to grind there's always something to kind of hook you in and yeah i mean kind of if you see if you see a video game company hiring a psychologist or an economist (laughs) i raise my eyebrows in you know scorn at that because come on it's a game like oh we've got to monetize our players and 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 i think see if these challenges um and this is every video game it feels like nowadays is every game wants to be the only game you play Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I know progression was a hot topic and it still is sometimes in the community. Um, but that's one of the things I loved about Sea of Thieves. It was, there was no FOMO, you know, like, oh, I haven't played for three weeks. I've lost out on this level. No, it's all still here. You might miss some of the more emergent because everyone's playing the new stuff at once moments, but you can still just take it in your own time and do what you like. And yeah. that is one of the best things about it from a design perspective, in my opinion. Yeah, they've they've done a really good job of of ensuring that everyone is at the same level and and you know problems with like division two. I love division two, but I can't play with people because while it it brings me up to whatever the highest level is sub sub like a couple levels, I don't have the gears or the 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 stats or the the you know the talent points and things like that. And it just it feels like I'm I'm still weaker even though you know yeah. i'm technically at the right level for content uh and sea thieves doesn't worry about that they they take a very different approach and i i think that it's an approach that i think came from the top i think it uh, started with a really nice article that i read um from edge magazine back in 2018 where craig duncan talked about how um uh, uh i think it was i can't remember if it's vertical progression or horizontal progression i think it's vertical progression in most games is a lie because everything that you do to increase your power is negated because of Eventually, you just run into enemies that also have their power level raised. Yep. 
So you're always just barely at the point where you should or shouldn't be able to tackle issues in, in games. Uh, but with a horizontal progression level, everything just comes down to everyone has the same amount of damage. It's the tools and the things that you bring to each fight that make it easier. Whether you have, you know, Disney sticks or gunpowder uh, kegs or things like um, um, blunder bombs, fire bombs to deal with different enemies in the world or different players in the world and how to to kind of tackle it as opposed to just using your sword or just using your eye of reach or your, your blunderbuss, what have you, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, getting into Sea of Thieves, A Pirate's Life, before we dive into the patch notes, because I, I... Yeah, I, sure. I, if I, I can always cut patch notes, but I want to get your, your thoughts on A Pirate's Life, because uh, I, I listened to you. You were actually guesting on a buddy of mine's podcast uh, over at the Xbox oh. Expansion Pass with Luke Lore. Um, yeah. And he's a great guy. Uh, he's a he terrible is. pirate. Terrible. Absolutely. <laughs> great guy. I'll, I, I know Joe Moran says that he's he's terrible. I think he's a great guy, but he's just a really bad pirate. Um, but I wanted to to talk about this because there was a there was one little comment that came out while I was listening. And of course, the Sea of Thieves fanboy over here is just like, got my antennas out for any mention of, of Sea of Thieves. <laughs> um, and most people generally like a pirate's life, but you had a very rough experience getting into oh. it. And, and that was even like after the launch too, right? This was something that you had waited yeah. for, for the, the content to be out for a little bit before you jumped into it. So what was your experience with A Pirate's Life? Well, yeah, oh man, it's a, it's, a, it's a long story. I think I should probably frame it by, you know, restating Sea of Thieves. When, when it first came out, um, I had a group of, group of friends. We, we, we piled into my home office, had like a mini LAN. Um, some of us were on PC, some of us were on our consoles, and we played Sea of Thieves uh, for four days solid. You know, we unlocked a bunch of stuff. We were quite a way up, and we ground that game because it was fun. It was genuinely fun. And we, we, we had a lull just before, um, which was the one that added the fog? Come on, give me, give me, a, give me a heads up here. <laughs> shrouded. Shrouded, shrouded sails. Spoils. Was it that one? Shrouded spoils, thank you. So that came out, and we were like, okay, this is cool. And then there was the year one anniversary update, mm -hmm. and our love for it just exploded because then with that you had the Golden Shores, and the Golden Shores for me is hands down the best thing, not just this gen, in my entire life I've played. And it's not because of the story mm -hmm. or because of the graphics or the gameplay. It was because of the emergent moments that happened within the game, and that's why I love Sea of Thieves as much as I do. That whole we, we we did it in like two sessions. We we, we again we had a land to celebrate it and play it. We did it all in two sessions, and for the majority of the second session, which we played over the course of like nine hours, we were pursued by a, a rival galleon. They were always just behind us. It felt like <laughs> we were in our own Goonies movie, mm -hmm. experiencing all of the new cool stuff that Rare introduced to that story and to that world. All the new tools and and just the extra layer of polish that the anniversary update brought but these guys were on us and every second was tense it was constant and it was it felt it felt incredible and i can't replicate that i've had people say do you want to play it again and i'm kind of like nothing i don't think anything could top that again yeah. but it goes down in history as uh, to this day the best memory i have ever in a video game and i've been playing games for a long time i'm old i'm like nearly 40 so I still beat you, by the way. I was I was listening to the podcast, and I, I've still got a couple of years on you, so no worries. Uh, okay, I won't I won't feel too old. It's it, I look <laughs> older than you, if, if that's any consolation. Um, I cheat though. I all the gray. I has I haven't gotten the gray yet because I I refuse to let the gray happen. Every gray uh, gets tweezed out. So <laughs> smart move. I shaved all of my head to prevent oh, the gray, and uh, you know I'm due. Uh, I'm due. Oh, okay. See, I wish I was actually bald because I prefer that now. You know, like, I'm just like, yeah, come on, just let it happen to me. I, you know, a lot of people out there with, with baldness are like, shut up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, you know, Pirate's Life then came out and, uh, you know, I was excited. Look, I like Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, it looked good. The trailer blew me away. There's a, mm. I did a reaction video. I watched it live with my team. And, you know, I'm known on, on Xbox Series being the resident Sea of Thieves fanboy. So I was like, oh, this is incredible, rare. I think I was like clapping. I was just like, this is just perfect. What a great, great idea. And then I played it. And um, I, I don't want to like relive my review. It's up there for reading if you want to get more like long form thoughts down on paper. But the, the nutshell for me was... 
it it created this again all these extra new areas and places to go and things to see but i i personally didn't find the story engaging and the biggest problem we encountered was we got to part two and we all know that there were bugs and issues with that particular chapter yeah uh and you know look hey my my time is limited you know we we were getting together remotely once a week you know on xbox live to play through you'd you'd get if you get your resources together you sail to the point you'd spend an hour you know getting down there and get oh it's broken mm-hmm. oh you know the only way to fix this we're gonna have to find a new server and repeat this oh it's 11 p.m I'm going to bed. I, I, you know, I don't have time for this right now. We'll have to come back to it. And we refused to do chapters three, four, and five and just come back because, you know, we yeah. wanted to know what happened in the story. That persisted for like three or four weeks of, of we just kept encountering that bug. I know they did a hot fix, but it, it just seemed to still really not enjoy letting us finish. And uh, I think we had like a three week break and I was like, hey, I've seen it definitely fixed now, or at least enough people aren't playing it that we can probably try again. Mm hmm. And at that point, it felt it felt like the magic had gone out a little bit. So we were like mm. bored through most of it because we played it eight times every time we got stuck. We get there, we fight the bad guy, um, we fight the mermaids, we come back up. Great, okay, next chapter. And then you know, I started to realize if you've played, if you've been to Disneyland, if you've if you've been on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, there's a wonderful homage to it in the game, right? And it's it's brilliantly done. Yeah. But I've never been to Disneyland. Uh, I have no fond memories of the ride and I'm there and I'm like, they've made this incredible backdrop detailed. It's beautiful, but it's, it felt to me like set dressing, um, mm-hmm. with very little actually new gameplay. I mean, if you were to boil it down and I know this is hypercritical, right? So I'm not saying that if you sat and enjoyed pirates life and it blew your mind, ticked all those boxes because of all those reasons that you're wrong, you're absolutely fine to feel the way you feel about it. But I think from a game design perspective, they created these, like the biggest one for me was you got to the like the shrouded like groves, I think they were, and you follow the winding river. We got there and we parked up and we were like, let's go explore. Except there's nothing to explore. The game doesn't tell you that, but there's nothing, there's nothing to find. It's all blocked off. You have to, and then we got to the far end and realized we had to go all the way back to get our ship. And I'm like, well, why, why make this incredible fancy corridor of which you don't actually give me anything to do in it apart from just go through it. And it started to grate on me a little bit. And the biggest criticism I have, I suppose, is that really the weakest gameplay element of Sea of Thieves, again, just an opinion, is the gunplay. I think that's a fair comment. A lot of people at the guns are just like, eh, they're serviceable. The the nautical combat is the, the star of the show, in my opinion, and it's the things that can happen when you're in that combat with all the boarding and and crazy shenanigans and to have only kind of really one chapter f- fully focused that isn't just like an on rails fight where the dutchman comes up and goes down and comes up and goes down was just like uh and then to have that final fight actually just be the ghosts ships again you know i was just like okay it, yeah. it just it, it just fell completely flat so that's that's my uh my opinion i'm going to die on this hill probably <laughs> But it's not to say I don't love Sea of Thieves. I think what they created was beautiful. The art direction was incredible. Uh, but it was for probably for people that really, really knew that ride and, and all of that jazz. And it, it just wasn't me. Yeah. Um, there's things I'd love to see added to Sea of Thieves that may never come. But we all have our different opinions on gameplay. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that, was, that was my Pirates of Life review in a nutshell. Yeah. I feel like I've just been on a big rant on the shush now. <laughs> well, I, so here's the thing. And, and for folks that are interested in the review, I'm going to put a, a link to that as well as the main website in, in the show notes for folks. So they, you can go read. It's a quick read. It's a really good read. And it definitely addresses a lot of what we talked about here. Uh, and and t- the reason why I wanted to talk to you about this, because after reading it, I agree with you that a lot of the criticisms that you have for the game from from the Pirate's Life perspective are accurate and and definitely ring true so it, it's easy to say like yeah these things didn't ring true or these things didn't resonate with with you and i yeah. can see exactly why and the criticisms that you have are very fair a lot of the ga- the gunplay is the weakest point of sea of thieves the gunplay uh on or the cannons are really the the best part for me at least uh when i'm actually going out there there's a reason why i still use the sword 100 percent of the time and it's because Same. i would rather i would rather swashbuckle than i would you know call of duty 
Um, no scope. <laughs> yeah. So so when I uh, when I go into the pirate's life, um, the thing that draws me in are the things that you don't have uh, nostalgia for. Like I have a ton of nostalgia growing up in Arizona and California and Alaska and stuff. Going to Disneyland has been a huge part of, of my life growing up and, and living in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride most of that time. If it wasn't that, it was like Haunted Mansion or something. Uh, was really, really big for me. And I really love that. But coming from your perspective, I can easily say like, yeah, A Pirate's Life hit for the people that it was targeted for. Um, oh, yeah. And, it, and it, it did a good job of weaving in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean to Sea of Thieves. I think they did a great job of telling a story that involves uh, both franchises, both IPs at the same time. But it does feel like a Saturday morning cartoon where you have yeah. have something that kicks up and there's a crest. You have that that uh, critical point where you have to you have to go and solve the problem. The heroes figure out how to solve it and then they go and they solve it. And then at the end of the day, we all, you know, throw our hands up and cheer. And then uh, Jack sails off into the into the golden portal. Um, yeah. And as much as I love that, because it is it is exactly what I would expect out of a Disney movie. Um, it's tough to look at that and say, what are some of the things that they could have done that may have been more interesting or allowed you to focus more on one aspect of it? Uh, and I think that's really tough when you're when you're taking two very good IPs that are very much kind of mirrored versions. It's like two yeah. two universes had the idea for a pirate's IP and they, they went off in their own directions. And then at some point they've just smashed together. Like they're making some really amazing Spider-Man movie. That's going to come out soon. Uh, and we get to figure out how it all works out. Um, so when, when you talk about that, I, I, I definitely see where you come from. Uh, and I think that those are kind of the things that I think rare needs to hear because if they're, if they're just hearing my perspective of it, I'm going to gush about the stuff that I really enjoyed. Um, the the ghost ships at the end with Davy Jones to me fell completely flat because it was such a big lead up in the prior tall tale that I had yeah. so much fun like discovering the brethren or the dark brethren court and finding out that Duke was the dark lord all along that I had been calling for like two years and having that be like the the moment where the good guys peer in on the bad guys talking about their next job and having yeah. that, that moment was so amazing for me that at the end of it, when I go and I destroy a bunch of uh, ghost ships and I, I take down a bunch of statues that I didn't even sail into and I go and I fight a bunch of ghosts in a tower and I met with Cutler Beckett and I'm like, wait, how did, what are you yeah. doing here? This is, I don't even know why you're here. Um <laughs> It was such a it was such a weird cognitive dissonance between what I just had, uh, you know, with Tall Tale three and Tall Tale four, where I was like, okay, this is finally the Tortuga that I want, and it's the yeah. Disney Tortuga, but it's just me. It's not like everyone's here kind of thing, but I still love it. Um, and then going into Tall Tale four, where I'm like, oh my god, it's a it's basically Goonies, but in a giant tower. But I I totally understand what you were talking about with having you know sailing to the to the coral the coral fortress i did a whole lap around that coral fortress just trying to see like okay what is here what am i gonna miss i don't want to miss anything before i commit to it and there's nothing it's beautiful there's, but there's nothing that, and we've been trained yeah that's that's my oh man it i could wax lyrical uh, about about some of this kind of stuff so it, is it me, right? And it's just an opinion again. Uh, do you did you find that the cutscenes, in particularly in Pirates Life, comparatively to some of the stuff we'd have in, you know, with Flameheart and Pen Dragon, went on forever, right? And I, I don't know if you've ever, you know, if you play co-op, I play Sea of Thieves, always co-op. I never go in solo. I'm always with my crew. That's how we play the Black Hurl. Go figure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like we're not pirates of the Caribbean fans. We named our ship the Black Hurl. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but the, when you're playing co-op and everyone can jump around and you've got chatting in your mic and mm -hmm. then you've got a solid eight minutes of what it feels like exposition in a piratey voice saying, we'll talk about this thing. And after a while, you people are chatting about their day. The story just goes out the window. And yeah. I don't think Shores of Gold made that mistake as much as A Pirate's Life did. Shores of Gold did have exposition of that nature, but it was it was often visual. And it was if it was spoken, it was short. It was to the point. And it, it, it keyed you up to the next quest and off you went. And I think Pirate's Life really 
lend, and I get it, you know, you've got the Disney license, go big or go home. But I think it, to its detriment, it went way too far into that exposition world to the point where I wasn't fully listening anymore. You know, and I had to go back and replay some of it on my own to make mm-hmm. sure that when I wrote about it, I had a full grasp of the, you know, the attempted gravitas of the story. Um, and I had the gist anyway, but I, I thought that that, was, that really weirded me out a little bit. I was like, Ray, like, are you, you're overestimating how much people are going to listen, especially in a co-op game, because I'm, you know, I don't know if anyone else has played co-op games and everyone's talking. And I'm often the guy that's like, shh, I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I wasn't in this occasion. It's, I don't know whether it was just chapter two really poisoned me on it, but my crew felt the same. They were like, oh, you know, yeah. like, it just feels so... And we love the game, and it really, you know, we haven't played Sea of Thieves, I think, for a couple of months now. Mm-hmm. And I've seen things, and I'm definitely going to be back. Um, but it's definitely like, you know, we played a lot. We're pirate legends across the board. We're like level 70 in most things. You know, I've, I've got a fair few hundreds of thousands of hours in the game. Um, but, yeah, I think those are the couple of the big mistakes and just that, you know, just that element of big set dressing but it's really just a, a line A to B. Don't go off the path, please. Um, it is much like Pirates Caribbean. It's yeah. just a ride. I, I definitely agree that a lot of the tall tales felt on rails. Um, I was there for it because I'd been feeling such a dearth uh, for the last year prior that I was I was waiting for the, the shoe to drop. I was waiting for the next big story moment. A lot of us have been talking about Flame Heart, how that story arc hasn't resolved and we're still kind of like you know waiting for for that story to wrap up or or to have some progress in it especially with like stitcher jim and wanda we still want to figure out what's going on with that so when we got a a a pirate's life it it very much felt like a feast you know it had been famine before now it was feast and i was i was ready for that uh from my my personal experience with the original tall tales i played all of those co-op uh, but I was with someone who was in it for the for the RP as well. Like we were we were there to to be the pirates to go through all that, and we had a really nice. a good time with it. And with the Tall Tales, I didn't have that. I went solo, and going solo uh, was great because I I went at my pace, and and I totally understand because playing Destiny when you're trying to like <laughs> listen to you, you got an audio log or a ta- you know a mission tablet or something going off in your ear, and someone else is like, "What mods are we using? What are, what was this fight again? And I'm like, yeah. oh my God, I just, I just want to hear what is Savathun saying? Uh, <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to understand. I was like, why is Crow being wimpy? I missed it. Did anyone else hear it? No. So yeah, time to Google. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough. And, and I, and I think that was kind of what poisoned me on Halo Reach. If we're, if we're throwing back a little bit because I was playing co-op and I was so, I was having so much fun playing with my friend that I didn't pay attention to half of the stuff that was going on. I got the gist of what was going on. But if you if you told me to recount, like, you know, the story yeah. points, I'd be like, well, there's a big dude and, you know, there's a Halsey and Halsey's talking about how they're all going to die. And they're like, we're not going to die. We're going to go take out the Covenant. The and, yeah. yeah. So there was all these things that I, I totally like could kind of tell you a story about, but I, I couldn't you know, recall anything it, it, verbatim. Yeah, it's it's funny, and I, I appreciate it's a, it's a, a small, moderate Halo tangent on, on a Sea of Thieves podcast, but, you know, with the news that Infinite is not launching with cooperative play, um, I have played every Halo co-op since 2001. Um, and the idea that I'm not doing that this time, initially, I was very, very sad about it. And I know that's a very silly thing for someone who's nearly 40 to be sad about, but... <laughs> Halo isn't just a game to a lot of people. I mean, you, you, you can see my backdrop. I appreciate other people can't, but um, it's an energy. It's, it's, it's some people, you know, it's, I've got friends that I met playing Halo 2 back in 2004 that I'm still friends with to this day. We've had births, deaths, weddings, divorces, everything in between, and we're all still friends, you know, 15, 16 years later. Um, and to not be able to, on launch night, have a LAN and play with my pals through the campaign. Initially, I was really, really down. But much to your point, well, the last few, you know, you kind of, the story goes out the window because you're chatting and you're laughing and you're experimenting with the sandbox. I'm kind of excited again to really pay attention and play through a Halo game with the story just for me. And then I can go visit and co op in three months. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll that- see. It's funny that you bring that up because I I predominantly do a lot of story stuff solo because I, I like to take it at my pace and I know that my pace 
as as a fan of of lore in general tends to be a lot slower than most people who are willing to just kind of push ahead and it's always that problem with co-op games when you're trying to tell a story it's like there are literal game markers in different sections that if someone trips over that marker there's a there's a thing going on and and if you're not caught up then congratulations you're you just totally missed out on whatever the heck was going on and it's like there, there's no way to go back and be like can we hit the can we hit the reset button there's not yeah. a reset but- button there's, there was a bit of that in Pirate's Life, to be fair. You know, Johnny yeah. Depp would suddenly materialize, and unless you were looking, you'd be like, "Sorry, is he talking? Where, where is he? Uh, oh, yeah. oh, he, I've walked on ahead, and I need to come back." What was he? Say? It happened a lot. Yeah, um, it's so, even harder when you have someone that hasn't played through Sea of Thieves, but they're a big fan of of Pirates uh, of the Caribbean, and I'm like, yeah. "Okay, okay, we're gonna do this, but I need you to be facing this way." Because if you don't, you're going to miss Jack. And I just want you to yeah. see Jack. And I just want you to see that interaction. So I will worry about everything else that's going on. Don't don't fret about anything except looking at Jack and looking at the ferryman. And just and enjoy. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's an odd one, man. And, you know, I, I, I get that a lot of people really, really love Pirate's Life. I had a chat with, um, I remember I posted my... You know, I was chatting about it, my opinion on Twitter and Miles Dompier from uh, Windows Central. Mm-hmm. Um, he he absolutely loved it. You yeah, know, but he's he's in he's in the US. He he was like I don't know four and a half out of five or something like that. Whatever Windows Central's review scoring is, I can't remember. Um, but it, when I said he he was like, it's okay. We all have a bad opinion sometimes. I'm like, oh, man, you know, like, <laughs> I, I wanted to love it. Oh, I really did. Okay. And I think everyone in my team was surprised. They were like. You, really a six out of 10 and i'm like hey according to our own review scoring a six is like good you know mm-hmm. like seven is great and and such and such you know but it's just it just didn't land yeah. um and there's things and you know hey if, if if we've got time i don't know what your uh what your timings are but um i'd love to chat about and this is a question for you right mm-hmm. so maybe you've been asked this before but we'll dive into patch notes and things perhaps in a second but question for you mm-hmm. if you could add three things to the Sea of Thieves sandbox without knowing about the limitations of how many ships can be on per server or whatever else they can add, just three things, what would you add to play with as a tool within the sandbox? Um, well, it's, I would love to have the ability to, and it's tough because I, I, I still look at this as a tool, even though I don't necessarily think it's like a, it's a tool in the sense of like, Hey, you got a bucket. Uh, but I would love to have, uh, dynamic ship spawns. Um, if I'm playing the game and I'm playing with two or with another person, we're on a sloop. If anyone else wants to join me, we have to drop what we're doing, yep. kill everything and spawn a break or have them spawn a break while we try to finish up what we're doing. And I would just, I would love it if I could just sail over to an outpost, if I could just uh, talk to the shipwright and be like, hey, we're going to sell you our stuff. Um, the merchant says that it's cool. Just if you could spawn us a brig, that'd be great on the same server. Yeah. Cause it could be a great server. We could be like having, you know, getting ready to go do a, an Ashen, uh, winds fighter or heading over to yeah, flame heart or something. And just being able to have a way to dynamically pull someone in. Or if I, if someone leaves, you know, I was sailing, uh, the, this last weekend with a buddy and we were doing a galleon, but we had two UK folks that were heading to bed. And we still wanted to go do something. So we're two manning a slu- uh, galleon over to a shrine to pick up a choral message uh, to get one of the Listerine bottles. And while we're sitting there, like, you know, trying to deal with this, he's like, all right, I'm going to swim down. And I'm like, hey, would it be cool if I go through up a, a merchant emissary flag so we could get a little bit of emissary rep uh, this this session? He's like, sure. So now I'm solo sailing a galleon. Oh, man. Over I've done to, it. Over to Century. Fun. Yeah. So, and, and I mean, he doesn't know this, but I, I straight up just rammed straight into that Island, had to damn near lost the ship, had to drop anchor. It was, it was rough, but the whole time he's just like, all right, well, I found a bunch of levers and I'm working on it. And I'm like, cool, I'm almost there. And uh, meanwhile, bailing. I'm like <laughs> bailing, bailing water out and everything's going to hell. And I can't, I'm just trying to stay afloat so we don't lose the ship. So it doesn't seem awkward where I come back and nothing is on there. Uh, and all the holes are fixed, but just to have a moment where it was like, all right, two people signed off we went and turned everything in and just being able to downsize that ship would be so big it would be such a big deal for me um and and to have that uh i always have a ton of ideas for for the game um so uh, one of the ones that i just thought of the other the last week i thought up an uh, an idea that that 
it's a lot of people seem to really like um so this is kind of rehashing for anyone that's been religiously listening to the episode so i apologize but uh having a flagpole at the at, at every outpost that is just an alliance outpost flag uh in limiting alliances to three ships per server so if you've got six ships on a server three of them are allowed to uh, alliance there's no rules about which ones or what you know they can they can decide it but only three ships can actually uh alliance at a time and for every uh flag that is is up as an offer or for every ship that has an alliance on that flagpole next to the shipwright, there's an indicator flag that shows like, hey, there are two ships, uh, two flags on this yeah. flagpole. So somewhere on the server, there's two ships that are alliance, which means there's there's opportunity for you to join that alliance, or there's an opportunity for you to go have hard mode and attack two ships that are alliance. Oh, or they could all the way. <laughs> so there's like things like that. I if I really wanted to be stupid about my third one, I'd say working doors on the galleon. We'll go with that. <laughs> Simple thing. Let me have hey, working it, doors on the galleon. Why not? You know, we've got <laughs> we've got windows and and flappable things on the sloop. I don't think it's too much to ask for a door. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's interesting, right? It, I I think about that question a lot. And funnily enough, a long time ago, must have been a year after the game's launch. Rare mm -hmm. actually, because they're in the UK. I'm in the UK. I, you know, I loved Sea of Thieves and they put out a call for like, submit us a design document for Sea of Thieves um, because we're hiring for designers. And I was like, I have ideas. So <laughs> I wrote up a design document and I'd have to dig it out. I'll have to dig it out just so people know I'm not full of crap. But um, they, there was some stuff that I put in there that did actually end up like a year later, but it was pretty obvious stuff that you kind of, yeah, this has got to come at some point. Yeah. But to your point on the Alliance poll, I would love it. There's nothing worse for me. You know, I'm, we were a very combative crew when we play. If you bump into us, you're probably going to be sunk, mm -hmm. you know, and that's that's because we're jerks. <laughs> that's but, okay too, though. That's fine. Well, the funny thing is there are, there are occasions where someone will react and do something hilarious while we're attacking them, and then we'll kind of laugh about it. And we'll be like, we'll let you live, lads, you know, like we're mm -hmm. just going to take your cannon or something <laughs> like that. Um, but I'd love, a, I'd love a, similar to your idea, but an idea of when I log into a server... How many ships are on here? How much fun is potentially out there for me? Because if yeah. it's a dead server, I'm probably going to want to try somewhere else. Yeah, it's hard to know. It's really, really tough. And there's there's pros to having that that sense of mystery on a server, like having that emergent gameplay. Uh, I'm, I'm always a fan of giving information that still remains anonymous so that you aren't you aren't being told everything like you have no idea how much loot is on any ship that you go around uh but you always have an idea like if you do see a ship then you do know that there's at least potential like i hell i i so i sailed out to today i sailed out to smuggler's bay and i was just going for for photos i just wanted to go see if i could get a couple quick photos for the the sea of thief shot thing there's a rowboat an ammo crate and a cannonball crate with an athena uh, uh, one of those Athena uh, merchant ch crates, Ooh. like in the water, and I'm like, that's not spawned. Hmm. What the? <laughs> but there's no one on the island, and there, there's like one chest that's like hanging out around there. So the only thing I can think of is, is that someone was like playing mobily, and they disconnected, and they just said, forget it, I'm not going to worry about it. But I don't, I don't know who would be trying to play mobile and doing an uh, an Athena voice. That's some, that's some dedication right there. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh man, the the the. What was it? Um, Thieves Haven Athena Grind. Mm, yep. I'm so close. Like, I've got everything. <laughs> like, we were all trying to get all the ghost stuff. And a couple of my crew, like, they played one session without me and they're ahead. And they're now being oh. absolute jerks because they're like, eh. Yeah. We, of course. Maybe we won't do that one. I'm like, please, I need like one more legendary <laughs> Athena skull. And that's it. And they're like, nah, maybe we will. Maybe we won't. Oh it's a, we, we troll each other all the time on this kind of stuff. And, <laughs> and that's why I've had so, you know, hearing hearing you talk about those memories, like someone's down in the sea pulling all these levers and you're going over there to do something and you have to crash the ship and suddenly you're like, you're nearly losing it and you're trying not to tell them <laughs> to cause panic. You, you, you're nailing what Sea of Thieves enables for players. Um, I could... I could regale with all of the different kind of moments that are seared into yeah. my brain, not just the Shores of Gold one. There was when they just introduced Mega Kegs. Oh. Right? Now, I don't know about you when you play. <laughs> um, I find it odd for anyone to like do a quest and cash it in, do a quest and cash it in. I'm like, we when we play, if you ever encounter us and you beat us, and, you know, look, I'm not tooting my own horn here, we're pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like, we very rarely get completely wrecked, um, unless it's PC players. 
you know, the CSGO professionals having a weekend off. That's usually when we're, <laughs> we're, we're like, damn you cross play. You know, like, <laughs> when the series X came out and 60 FPS was the norm, yeah. we were very happy because it was oh like, right, console only. Thank God. Um, but mega kegs had just come out and we were like, oh, these are really valuable. We've got to stay. Oh, there's a storm and there's a volcano. We'll just leave them here. We'll leave them here in the sea. We've just got to loop around. We've got to pick this thing up and we'll come back. And I put a cross on the map or a little circle on the map. They're mm-hmm. right here, zoomed right in. They're here. And we had eight hours worth of loot on our ship, like millions of coinage. Oh, and no. this is back in like oh, no. 20, 20, late 2018, late 2019, something yeah. like that. And we do this, we do the route and we're all arguing. And, and you know, we were just going to go. Our captain, Tom, was like, right, we're just going, we're cashing in, sod the mega kegs. And we were like, both me and my pal Bart, we were like, no. We gotta go get them. We gotta go get them. We insisted, and I'm literally at the map table, and I'm like, uh, "They should be right around here." Oh, we lost it all, and my mate, my mate Tom, he just, he just disappeared. Like he was off. <laughs> he was off Discord. He was rage quit completely. He was so angry at us. There is a WhatsApp chat on my phone called Sea of Salt. <laughs> which still has it was it was burned because of all the vitriol that was being it was just oh, the, it's these kind of moments between friends and that sea of thieves um just enables in abundance and that is why i love it so much because there are countless stories like that did you remember um oh the, the first time the speaking trumpet came in what a pivotal moment for people going oh, yeah. oh my god sea of thieves emergent da, 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 da. we got sunk by this ship uh, a while back into this server mm-hmm. and we then had already done Merrick and we, we got there because we saw loads of ships were gathering and we saw the same crew and we were like, oh, we'll help, we'll help. And they were like completely unsuspecting and then we just, just destroyed them. And I remember <laughs> hearing over the, the speaking horn, why are you doing this? <laughs> and it was just like, it gains you nothing. And we were just cracking up. And it's, I know it's a, a jerk move, but that's why I love Sea of Thieves. It just gives you those moments. Yeah. Uh, the, there's two things that I always love love about Sea Thieves. One, it's a memory generator, and two, it's a it's a, a moral compass uh, like navigator. Like you, every time you log on, you're always like looking at the like you look at a compass. You look at a lot of compasses in this game, but there's always right. a moral compass that is somewhere hidden in your soul that you're just like, "Am I gonna be the jerk today? I don't know if I'm gonna be the jerk today. How many people are sailing with me? Three other people <laughs> in one other ship." I think we're going to be the jerk today. I think that's going yeah. to be our goal today. So I love it. <laughs> it's a pirate game. I mean, come on. It's not, you know, I know this is a, a memed phrase now within the community at this point, but it's not <laughs> Sea of Friends, you know, like it, it is what it is. You know, there's there's room for play style. But what I like is that it's up to me. Like that other crew that I might be destroying right at that moment mm-hmm. might make a hilarious beg for freedom. And yeah. we'll react as humans being might and be like, yeah, all right, we'll let you live. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's great. The it's it's so much fun to to be able to have those moments, and we're going to be able to have some more of those moments. But to talk to to speak to the uh to the salt that tends to come with Sea of Thieves, um, there's one thing that's coming out, and, and we're going to be diving into the patch notes here. Uh, but there's one thing that's coming that I wanted to get your thoughts on because um, it deals with the Emporium, and it deals with uh mm-hmm. combat balance. Because everyone loves to argue about combat balance in Sea of Thieves as if it's like a CSGO. Uh, but recently, they came out with a recent update that has the uh, Crimson Crypt cannon flares. Uh, now, I am, I'm an old goth that okay. absolutely <laughs> loves the Crimson Crypt set. Uh, so anything to do with any kind of gothic stuff, I'm just, I'm there for it. So I bought this You're set. You're on board. And I, I love this, th- for, and for a little bit of history... I absolutely hate the cannon flares altogether. I think the cannon flares were a terrible idea. I think it was a really bad thing to monetize. I hate the idea of changing anything about something that I use predominantly to kill people with. Um, yep. So when they came out with the flares, uh, I've never bought any of the other flares if I had a choice. Uh, they've always been included with ship sets that I bought, but I don't use them ever. And the Crimson Crypt one was the first time that I started using one because they have little bats. And I'm like, well, of course, I'm a Batman fan. I'm a goth. Of course, I'm going to use the stupid Crypt Crimson Cannon Flare. This was the first time that I think anyone's gotten really upset about it besides me because they they recently changed uh, the way that they are and they now act more like traditional cannon flares where they obstruct a fair amount of the vision when you fire a cannon 
as such with black powder probably should have a whole lot of smoke coming out not something i like your story it's a game can't really you know you gotta you gotta weigh that in your in your mind about how you want to look at that but there's a little bit of kerfuffle going on with the community right now because uh they changed it so that it's more in line with what other cannon flares are and it decreases the tactical advantage of what these cannon flares were doing prior to this update um and i wanted to get your opinion because rare has put out on the forums uh and thanks to jotar uh jotaro for tweeting about this but um she put in a request uh, or a post in the forum saying if you want to submit a request to the support team uh they can take a look about getting a refund if you bought the the crimson crypt ken flares but um do you use cannon flares? Like, is that something that really kind of falls yeah. in your purview? Yeah, I mean, we we were very uh, we we love the color green on the black curl. So when mm. the I think I think it's the Athena set or the legendary set has a green kind of puff of smoke. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I totes equipped them because hey, I've got like something like ten million gold coin. Like you know, we just <laughs> bought whatever we wanted. Mm. Um, so I, I I didn't mind them, and I I thought it was fine. I get your point about you know. There is a limit. I mean, I have to be fair to Rare in that they didn't introduce monetization into that game for a very long time mm -hmm. compared to other titles. It wasn't their day one. Um, I think they've done it in a fairly decent way. Like, there's nothing there that is pay to win. But this particular scenario is, and just so I understand it, the original flare when it was purchased had less uh, vision obstruction, right? So everyone that really plays Sea of Thieves are going to be like, okay, well, this is this is advantageous to me in a fight. I will definitely drop the X amount, a couple of quid on this flare. And then, yeah, they've made that purchase, but then Rare have updated that in-game item to remove that advantage. Ah, well, that's the only reason I bought it. So if that no longer exists, I'm not really into bats. Give me my money back, right? Yeah. I think I think the fact that they've said, hey, if, if you really feel strongly about this and you only bought it so you could have like a, a minuscule 6% more combat efficient advantage on you know other pirates... Yeah, you can refund it. I think that's the fairest situation because they're saying, hey, yeah, we're not going to jeopardize the overall balance within the game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is the best way forward. If you want your money back, fair enough. Um, if you don't, cool. Um, I think I think that's I think that's an appropriate response from Rare, and, and it's very rare, like you know, quite reasonable and fair. Yeah, so that's that's kind of where I'm with you uh, for for this event. So it's it's available to you if you want to put in a support ticket. I'll have a link to that in the show notes. So if you did purchase those for the tactical advantage, uh, but you'd like to get your refund because they now fall more in line with actual cannon flares uh, for the rest of the game, then go ahead and do that because this is one of those rare and not to use rare like that way, but it is one of the rare instances where the thing that they were offering was something that was being purchased with actual money as opposed to just yeah. gold like the dark adventurer sales definitely offer more visibility due to the cut of the actual sales but those are the ones that uh, are the v mm -hmm. like the cut the yeah we use them because yeah, yeah. From, our, from our captain's point of view he doesn't have to kind of get off the wheel and look around the corner he yep. can just see yeah um, but those are all but that's all gold that is that is something that someone spent the the gold they saved up that was that was a a thing that they could do just like with the storage crates with the commodity crates if you yeah. if you want to have enough cannonballs to be able to handle anything you can straight up buy it but it's going to cost you gold and that is the the main currency of sea of thieves so it falls in line with what i would expect just like if you were to sail over to a fort every session and grab a bunch of kegs or grab a bunch of fruit or grab a bunch of supplies and stuff like it's no different for me it's just an exchange of gold versus time which one thing sea of thieves has a real hard time with is respecting players time so that is very true yeah <laughs> it's the sad fact of the game i, I love it but it, it has a hard time uh letting people dip in and dip out uh when you want to play with friends um yeah. so let's let's dive a little bit into what the actual show notes are so we've got a game event or not a game event yeah, it's kind of a game event we've got a new event coming up it's the Feast of Bounty. It's in celebration for the uh, the, the American holiday of uh, Thanksgiving. Um, and it kicks up from the 22nd of November to the 29th of November. Uh, these will probably start up around the same time as 10 p.m. or no, 10 a.m. GMT, uh, 2 a.m. Pacific and 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
Um, those are going to have set challenges. A lot of the challenges for those are going to be revolving around going out and picking up uh, different animals. So like pigs and chickens, you'll have to catch those and bring them in to turn into uh, the respective reps. And uh, you have to do so while sailing a flag. So when this kicks up, you're going to have to go over to Lorena and you're going to have to purchase the uh, feast flag, uh, I think is what they're calling it. And once you do that, then you'll head over and start working on grabbing animals to bring back so that you can do the quote unquote preparation of the first part of this actual uh, 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 Thanksgiving event. And that'll start up on the 22nd and I think it goes to the 25th. Uh, I'll, I'll have to double check on that, but it goes uh, uh, to halfway to where it actually hits, um, where it actually hits Thanksgiving. And then after Thanksgiving, that's when you start doing all the cooking and eating meat. So you'll go out and there's there's different things to different challenges to to achieve by eating uh, snake meat, kraken meat, cooking uh, kraken meat and, and megalodon meat, things like that. Uh, and there's an overall quest to like over overfeed yourself at, at this point as well too there's like a larger quest to do yeah. uh and that will actually if you if you complete all the challenges if you complete all of the uh the the things in the event uh you'll actually get the feast of bounty makeup uh a new scar which is is hilarious if you look at it because it looks like you've just got a whole bunch of like chicken scratches on you like you've been running around trying to grab a bunch of chickens Classic. and it's just like you just completely mauled by these animals uh you've got tattoo set and uh the flag as well as the the seasonal renown that'll help you out with that so uh keep an eye out for that folks if you're if you're looking to get into the next event we were kind of wondering what was coming up and if they were going to be releasing more of the wicked web set after fury of the damned doesn't look like that's the case looks like we're going straight into uh feast of bounty also just to kind of give you guys a heads up Twitch drops are active. They're active now. You can get the rest of the Twilight Hunter set that's available. Make sure that you're logging in for 20 minutes a day to check out the see if these pay, uh, partnered streamers uh, to get those drops. You just need the 20 minutes. Doesn't matter how many different partners that you swap to and from. Uh, but like last week, we had Bearded Guys Gaming on. Uh, definitely go support them if you guys can. Um, if if you want to join the partner program, I don't know if you stream a whole lot to really justify that. But if you wanted to join John, you could definitely become a, a Sea of Thieves partner. You know, I there was a time. There was a time. In fact, there, the, you know the the functionality to give you, um, to let let they give partners the ability to have their own server, right? You can invite ships in and, and things yep. like that. Um, through Nerd Propellant, who who runs a fantastic Etsy store full of Sea of Thieves goodies, I think you've got one of his very cool uh, light up uh, backlight Boxes, things. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he had a friend who donated one to us, and we ran a competition, oh, wow. right? So oh, he just cool. let us borrow it for the night. So he invited my my crew in, and we basically said, so it was me, my crew, or the Black Hole on a brigantine. And we said to everybody on Xbox era that likes his thieves, come at us, mm. make an alliance. Nice. First crew to sink us wins and they'll win a prize from, from the team. Oh, and that's cool. uh, here's, here's where it's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> we took we took we took eleven brigantines out before we went down, oh, and wow. we only went down because we ran out of ammunition. We were literally throwing <laughs> bad language at them. Um, so you know, we we've done a couple of streams of that nature, and that was one of the most fun ones. I'd love to do that again. Um, I think there was some there was not enough people to get like I wanted a mixture. I wanted galleons and sloops and brigantines. We ended up with like five briggies <laughs> after us or four briggies. And it was carnage, but we, we somehow pulled it off. It's a great watch if you want to see like a relentless assault on a crew that are barely holding it together. It was really good fun. Oh, that's um, awesome. But yeah, part of the that perk of the partner program, I'd love to do more stuff like that with my community mm -hmm. at Xbox Era, where we can just make these kind of cool, like have a race and do all of this cool stuff. Um, I, I hope that Rare look to, and I'm, I'm, I can't remember if I read that they were thinking about this, allowing people to buy the ability to rent a server right via the emporium or however they would do it um it would be something i'd be very interested to do because i can't guarantee uh, i'm too busy probably to commit to streaming sea of thieves all the time mm -hmm. um and you know the ability to be able to do that and then have a kind of custom fun battle royale of our own yeah i'd be down with that yeah
Ahoy there, Pirates. This is the ad for this episode, and I did want to let you know if you wanted to avoid these and just get a regular filler, you can head over to the Patreon. There's a special feed just for patrons that get the ad-free version. If you want to keep listening, though, I can't say I blame you because this week I want to let you know about Loot Crate and getting 15% off of most crates and crate subscriptions when you use the link and code Robots Radio in the show notes. Also, you can head over to audiobooks.com, get your first three audiobooks for free, and that can include any to VIP books or use the affiliate link for Green Man Gaming. If you're a PC gamer or you'd like to save money on games, it's one of the benefit of being a PC gamer. Head over to Green Man Gaming. You can get codes for Steam, Epic, any of the different stores that they have deals going on. They have deals going on all the time and if you plan on buying there, please consider using our affiliate link. All of that goes straight to me through the network. Thank you all so much for everything that you do to support this podcast. It means the world to me and I continue to try and improve the quality and the content for you. With that pirates, let's get back to the show. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. We've got a Sherpa program in my Discord and and the the program is purely designed to try and bring in people who are fresher to see these than some of the old salts and just literally teach them the ropes and having a custom surfer to be able to spin up to get a, a couple crews together on a galleon and be like all right we're gonna we're is gonna learn play? fighting tonight and just that have that is a... super honorable like mm-hmm. i i've got to admit that's a really cool thing to do because yeah i you know part of the fun of sea of thieves is not googling anything and finding your way but i got to start from day one where you know, you were at a fort, and if you defeated a ship, the ship would just spawn the island away from you, and you'd have to do it all again. Yeah. But that was what I would consider <laughs> hard mode, and I got to Pirate Legend in hard mode. You know, these kids nowadays with their anniversary <laughs> updates and their emporiums, they have no idea what Sea of Thieves back in the day was like. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so the fact that you were out there, you know, hey, are you interested in Sea of Thieves? Well, come into effectively a, a you know, it's a PVE server where you're teaching people how the, the game works and the tools. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I would I'm, love I'm, to. I'm impressed. So that's that's the goal. Uh, I I don't, I'm not able to stream just because obviously I've, I've got a regular job and I don't have time to be able to put it in there. Plus, I, I'm, I'm 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 a talker. I'm not a I'm not a streamer too much. So most of my time I'm spent recording stuff than I am actually like uh, streaming it and stuff, which is a weird thing to think about. Uh, but yeah, like I would love for them to give us the opportunity to pay for a custom server. I would totally have a Keelhalt server where it's like I'd give yeah. my moderators and uh, trusted people that have been with the community for a long time, and I would I would let them have access to that so that if I'm not around and they want to spin up a server and teach some people some stuff, it's like that's a great great opportunity that's a great yeah place to be able to do that and that's the thing that i think rare is is like likes having new people join up that's why they have the open crew even though they they offered the closed crew option shortly after the game launched but to be able to have someone who's fresh to the game and there's so much to learn in the game that is is not explained having someone literally kind of walk you through uh is such a boon and and having a custom server would definitely be a, a, a benefit for that um for sure Moving into kind of the Emporium stuff, uh, I did want to jump on a, a couple of these things, but not too much because there's actually some interesting show notes to get into. But um, there's some bookworm emotes that uh, are mostly just you kind of hanging out with a book, reading a book, as whether you're like sitting cross-legged reading it. Like I'm, all, I'm already coming up with ideas for like how I want to try and recreate the scene from uh, Never Ending Story where Sebastian is like sitting in in a, an attic reading a book in the middle of a storm because it's a, a sea yes. of thieves shot is like the uh, it's the storm theme so i'm i'm like trying to brainstorm ideas like that but uh working on that there's a smooth wo- smooth moves one that is a set of emotes that's like dancing there's a free one now that's uh the splash emote which is the chair scene from flash dance which is hilarious uh and speaking of Amazing. hilarious uh there's there's been some fun things on twitter about that um no ships at this time and they have the festival of bounty uh, cosmetics that they've had in the past um, available again now that it's that time of the year uh, and then of course there's going to be a black friday sale that starts on the 26th so keep an eye out if there's some stuff that you've wanted to purchase from the emporium but haven't wanted to shell out the the 30 40 bucks for the full set uh, a lot of those ship sets are going to be on sale the um one thing that i wanted to talk to you about because you haven't been playing for a bit uh sure. have you worked through the season 
as far as like the season passes and, and work to try and hit 100 uh, renown each season? Man, it's terrible. I have bought, and this is a shameful thing to admit, I have bought two plunder passes mm -hmm. and have barely completed either of them. Um, mm. So it's kind of like been a, a pointless purchase. And I think, ah, man, it, it's not that Sea of Thieves isn't still great. It's just, I it's not a game I'll ever play on my own. And mm -hmm. um, it's a game that I love to play with two particular friends who we've played it so much that it's very much a case of we are literally taking a break and waiting for that, you know, waiting for the next big anniversary update, you know, like yeah. there's been, I, I don't think I've ever read anything, but they, they did like a frozen set, frozen ship set where everything was blue and icy. Yeah. There's that big gap down at the bottom. And I remember having an argument with a friend of mine. <laughs> he was like, they're never going to introduce icebergs. It's the Caribbean, man. I was like, no, it's the Sea of Thieves. We've got like <laughs> giant flaming skulls. I think a bit of ice, you know, in a new biome would be seriously cool. Let's, let's, let's explore that as a possibility. Yeah. Um, I think we're waiting for that kind of moment, whatever that new area new big set of tools that big hurrah um i gotta wonder in like five years or something like that is there going to be a moment where they'll stop supporting xbox one to mm. allow for more grunt more processing power for the new consoles and then we'll see different things because i think the 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 c is a surprising resource hog as i understand it from a sea of these perspective in terms of game uh compute um so it, it's just it's going to be one of those things i think i think the plunder pass is a really good move um for those that want to use it but i can't especially nowadays i can't commit enough to really take advantage of it anymore which is a shame you know yeah. if it had come out two years ago i probably would have done a lot of them at this point yeah well i i i'd see where you're coming from because as someone that covers xbox in general you have to spend a lot of your time keeping up with a lot of the stuff that's coming out so i i yeah. totally i'm the same way with uh halo and destiny for me halo and destiny those season passes are if i get to them awesome but i'm not gonna be too too you know strung out if i if i miss like a one season here or there and in halo mcc does a good job of like making sure that you can kind of pick up what you want when you want but destiny definitely yeah. does not uh so generally like with destiny i'll try and grind that thing out as fast as i can because i just i it's such a long grind for that one um but i want to get those cosmetics because i paid for the season uh so the reason i bring it up is um a lot of the stuff that's been in past season passes uh, in the plunder pass and stuff haven't been available and we're just starting to get some of that stuff into the emporium so a lot of the plunder pass items that uh that were in season three are now being made available for season four um unfortunately uh. it's not like a discounted price if you paid the, uh. the plunder pass but i mean if there's something that was in there that you really really liked and you were hoping to get but just didn't get an opportunity at least there's a way for you to kind of pick it up now that's that's good i mean and it's funny talking about battle passes you know um halo infinite's battle pass system i presume you've read about it in mm -hmm. the if you bought a battle pass and then you didn't play for three months and and you wanted to go back to that battle pass it's not gone away and you can do it yeah. i would hope that we think about something like that like that that sounds like a really good way of doing it that's you know yeah, yeah i i can choose where i want to spend my time it's, yeah that would be cool yeah i i like the especially given how much simpler it typically is for sea of thieves to be able to finish up their their seasonal renown uh, you can you can if you're a good crew and you and you really dedicate yourself to a couple weekends you can really grind hard and knock it out fairly quickly but you have to you actually just have to get on and actually invest that time um, which is tough when it asks you to do so much uh, for one session um, so that's I, I would love it for them to be able to offer that opportunity where if you paid for a season pass and the plunder pass that if you finish up say like the one that you're currently on but there are still a lot of levels left in one of the past ones or for for new players that are coming in that haven't had an opportunity to play the game since season one or season two or season three for them to be able to buy those because there happens to be really cool cosmetics in there that they want yeah. that that aren't just you know piecemealed out on the emporium i would love if they took another look at this and said like ah you know what we it, let's give them something to play for instead of yeah. just throwing it in there for for the the higher higher price hike 
Um, it's it's I can see why they're doing it business wise, but I would love it if they actually did it the way that kind of Halo Infinite's doing it. But I think this is the first time I've ever seen a company approach a season pass the way Halo Infinite is doing it, which is yeah, it's, it's awesome. very interesting to see what effect it will have. You know, if it's re- if it's a, re- if it's a resounding success, you know, there's hope out there that you know if it works well and players love it. Yeah, let's see more games adopt that kind of thing. And you'd hope other first parties within Microsoft would at least pay attention and have that conversation. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. And one of the other things that uh, I, I noticed while we were talking is uh, I noticed that because you haven't been playing a whole lot, it didn't sound like you're 100% capped out on all of the uh, trade companies. It seems like you maybe got a couple more levels in, in some of the trade companies to get to that 75. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're 75 in reapers for sure because mm-hmm. we're jerks i mentioned that uh, <laughs> i think we're 75 in in uh pirate athena um mm-hmm. we're we're i don't know high 70s in gold hoarders and order of souls merchants like you know like i'm not dissing you merchant fans out there all right if you enjoy merchant runs more power to you but i ain't getting chickens for nobody it's just, <laughs> just it's not a gameplay loop i enjoy you know the grind to do that back in the old, old days to get to 50 mm-hmm. was was it and when they said good news here's 25 more levels of it mm-hmm. i was like no no it's probably i'm probably <laughs> never going to touch a merchant quest again do you know I, I, we were talking about ideas that we'd been see of thieves mm-hmm. they kind of did trade routes I, I i've said this to this day if they brought in not skelly ships but ai controlled trading vessels yeah. that were heavily armored mm-hmm. or that you could contract out and you could say i'm going to guard this vessel mm-hmm. on the trade route and then you know it, it would alert it would appear on the map there's a vessel being guarded from here to here and players on the server could come and attack it that would be interesting yeah that would get me going to save some rare tea crates from the ocean waves but going to get pigs and chickens or going to kick up rum bottles for me it was just fetch quest to the extreme and it was just it, it was the only kind of uh outlet that did not tick my box um i'm sorry to say so yeah they're, they're, they're gonna stay in the 50s for a long time i think well the good news is is that this update actually brings in lorena's uh recommendation letters so if you don't want to have to grind those uh-huh. but you have the gold that you're sitting on and you don't have anything to do with it you can easily head over to lorena she will definitely sell you a letter of recommendation which will increase your level regardless of what level you're at by one full level so interesting i would take a look at, at her inventory because uh those are now being refreshed in the uh in in her stock right now so that way you don't have to necessarily go out and grind those uh the idea that you bring up is one that i know a buddy of mine um cj from the player one podcast uh consistently brings up uh anytime we get a chance to chat he's he's always wanted to have a trade route uh where yep. you're where you're defending a ship uh, against AI or player threats uh, to try and like do something interesting with the actual merchant alliance. And it, and it, I, I agree. I think it'd be really fun to see how that actually worked out because if it was on the map, it would be, it would be a point of interest where most of the point of interests in the game are big things in the sky. Uh, yeah. I, I love when we've like, for example, the shrines are a point of interest in the game, but it's not something that's highly advertised. It's just a small little shimmer of light that's kind of resting on the top of the, the water. And if you know it's there, you know what it is, you can go do it, but you never know if anyone's actually there until you actually get there. And kind yeah, of like the trade sure. routes. Yeah, I'd love, I'd love to see things like that. Similarly, I'd love to see, do you remember, you remember Assassin's Creed Black Flag? I didn't play much of that. Uh, again, World of Warcraft, but I, it's uh, on the list. Yeah, I mean, from a pirate perspective, I'm, I'm not a huge Assassin's Creed fan, but it was probably my favorite one, but only because of the pirate stuff. As soon as you were on land doing assassiny stuff, ugh, boring. <laughs> but... They had these legendary ships uh, in the four corners of the world, like, you know, Blackbeard and, you know, Long John Silver or whatever, whatever pirate name you want to throw at it. Mm -hmm. And they were always ridiculously hard. There was one ship that was two of them and they would work together as an AI to Mm -hmm. defeat you. And they were huge, you know, compared to your smaller, more nimble vessel. Wouldn't it be cool to see, you know, the, you know, the, the, the East India Trading Company, the Redcoats, whatever, come in Mm -hmm. to the world and try and control it. And they have these giant mano wars yeah. where it's a big threat and, you know, and they really pack a punch and there's there's whole new techniques and methodology to taking them down. And, uh, you know, think of it like a mobile fort. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah. But hey, I, again, this is, we're talking about a game that has a lot crammed into it. 
there's limited resources available compute wise on on the og xbox one and for at least for the foreseeable future the game has to run on that machine so yeah i can't wait for them to be able to drop it and then we'll see some hopefully more interesting things happen we'll yeah see. yeah the ships are definitely the most uh resource intensive it still it still amazes me to this day uh that i look at the stuff and they're like we we really we really want to get a brig in but it's going to take a lot to get the to get to, to manage the resources to get a brigantine ship in the game and then fast forward a year later it's going to take a lot of resources for us to spawn 15 ghost ships on this server and make sure that it doesn't crash anything else. And then they're and like, we used to have problems where if you had a Ford up and a Megalodon, they they turned off the Kraken because they just couldn't. They, it was it was too much instability. So I'm I'm constantly amazed by the team and just how much they're able to uh, manage their resources, even on the OG Xbox. Because while the loading times are, are terrible and it doesn't look nearly as good, I am still amazed that this game is able to run in coming into the fourth year on those systems um i would be very curious to hear from them if they view that as much of a as a hurdle or if it's literally just a a logistics issue that they're running into where it's just time and ideas and how much they can work out versus uh whether or not the hardware itself is is still hindering the game because i, yeah. I hear your opinion a lot and i and i definitely see that perspective because i, I i've seen where you know those consoles are compared to what we're playing with now and it's it's a it, there's a huge discrepancy um and i just don't know that microsoft wants to let those consoles go that player base go not yet not yet not yet not with the chip shortage and everything else i mean i'd argue that that's the beauty of game design um mm -hmm. you know i'm a i'm a big halo forge fan um mm -hmm. you know the needler on my wall in my office i yeah. won from making a map for halo 5 forge um and the beauty of stuff like that is you've got you've, you've you're in this box you can bend and you can you can take shortcuts and you can mask things but you can't do more than the box will allow yep and that's why game design is so interesting in some ways they've developed this and somehow it, despite the challenges ahead of it and how much resources it will take it somehow works somehow yeah somehow <laughs> it's it's crazy um we're we're closing in close on on the time frame that we're allowed to really play around with uh so i didn't want to i didn't want to take up too much time with uh, a lot of the other patch notes the one thing that i did want to touch on is that the the sloop has some redecorating according to the patch notes we instead of the brig which was completely worthless on the because i and it's funny too because i remember this i remember this uh this comment from joe when he was talking on a on a uh i think it was a weekly stream in the year in the first year they were talking about how they originally had the idea that they were thinking maybe they could have more than just two people on a sloop and that would afford the opportunity to use the brig that never came to fruition instead we got the brigantine and that was a better solution i think in the in the long in the end in the end of it uh but we finally got rid of the brig the brig's gone you don't have to worry about the weird brick. Now we have a bed. And I don't know why we have the bed, but at least we have a bed. So if, if you wanted to if you wanted to go to sleep and do some uh, role playing on the sloop, um, at least that space is now a more accessible area on the sloop, which I think is is good considering how much yeah. landscape is actually on the sloop. Being able to put stuff on the bed um, or have that available there is, is much, much, much better. I, I much prefer that. Uh, my only concern is if that area is now accessible to cannon holes, because that's the one thing I haven't found out yet. And if that's the case, then that adds one more hole on the sloop, making it easier to sink. And I don't know how well, I feel about that. I, I I feel like that is definitely needed. Damn, sloops are indestructible. <laughs> they are the, it, as a as a main main brigantine player, mm -hmm. sloops are the biggest annoyance. They are. <laughs> oh man, one bucket. Oh, I'm empty again. Good luck sinking me. You know, I can almost picture them flipping me off as they sail away and just, oh, they drive me nuts in the game, man. They're the one. Galleons, I can take down all day long, but sloops, when you have a really good sloop yeah. sail, you know, man, they are evil. And it's like you pump them full of cannon and they're just like, yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it drives yeah. me. So one more hole. Maybe that's a good thing. I hope so. I'd be curious <laughs> to see what, what balance changes that would uh, that would bring. But 
Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, it's it's definitely sloop is the hard mode and and to the sloop the solo sloopers out there like uh the um shockwave zero or beard again and stuff. They they really do kill it as far as uh being that uh, annoying little bitey dog that just you don't think has a whole lot of bite until they just you, they nip at you so much that eventually you're just like, "Okay, I give up. Sink me." Uh but yeah, there it'll be it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Um as far as the rest of the notes, I'm going to probably put most of this other stuff in next week's episode because there's not too much else uh the one thing that i did want to bring up that if you didn't know uh is that they did fix the, the point where uh for one um mer- mermaids don't show smoke if it's for other crews if it's your mermaid you'll see the smoke if it's for other crews they won't see the smoke anymore so hopefully that fixes in and that works properly the one big thing though is while boarding a ship from the sea players no longer are able to muffle the boarding audio effects by grabbing the ladder while underwater or while using equipment, ensuring nearby players will always hear someone boarding from the ocean. This, that's awesome. That's a big, that's a big deal. I, I yeah. absolutely, there's so many times where I've been boarded by someone and I've, and I generally have a pretty keen ear for what's going on around me. I, I know the sounds, I know what to listen for. I can hear a lot of that stuff, but recently and in last, last, few updates i would say it's been surprising how many times i've been uh snuck up on with a border and i'm i'm assuming it's a lot to do with this and it really frustrates me that that was the case because there's been a couple times where i've been sunk because of that and i'm really just i'm just glad that this is one of those things um yeah the the one last thing that i wanted to touch on before we wrap up is that players should no longer be able to strike at a location where other players may be respawning and receive an audio effect confirming that player's location. So like we were talking about with those older systems or even with uh, uh, older PCs, your load time from the ferry is, is, is significantly longer than if someone playing on an Xbox Series X or anyone playing yeah. on like an MVME. Like it's just, it's insane how hardware literally dictates how fast you can spawn back on on your ship that's always been a pain point uh that i think a lot of people have just kind of had to eat uh kind of like hit reg but i i feel like that's one of those things where thankfully there people aren't going to be able to predict where you're going to be because there's only a few spots on a sloop that people spawn or on a brig where they can spawn and if you can if you can detect that before you're even loaded into the game like that kind of falls in line with uh being able to shoot through parts of the ship where it's like it's through the mast yeah why was that ever a thing that's not a skill that that's just an exploit for game knowledge like that that's not something that someone taught you how to do better um so i'm glad that they're fixing that uh you you tend to play a lot of pvp are there things out there that you've noticed that are still kind of like on your radar as as issues that you run into where you're like man this is the thing that really and i assume that that hit registration is probably one of the main things because it's been such an issue uh, overall yeah um, I, I mean hit, hit registration um uh, the, the cross play thing is not so much an issue now because obviously i you know now 60 fps is the norm on the new series of consoles even on series s mm-hmm. we we all make that transition right you know i used to play on pc i have a a 32 by 9 ultra wide monitor oh, i absolutely you. love playing sea of thieves <laughs> with it because it just i mean sea of thieves is one of the most beautiful games it's timeless its art style is just going to stay incredible for a very very long time and it, i used to love playing it and i still do but there was always that moment where you'd encounter the aforementioned sloop player i mentioned earlier that was really a csgo champion just having fun because sea of thieves is not that environment but yeah it's an fps i can take the same skills i've got and do these crazy 360 no scopes with a sniper rifle through the mast of your ship to take you out because i know you're there it used to drive me nuts and you'd know like i you know there's there's a bit of oh you just got beat they were better than you but you know that moment where you've been dominating all night and then you just encountered that that crew that is only hopping like mad and nothing you seem to do seems to hit because somehow the hit registration is not working and you can't turn fast enough because they're on pc and they just wipe four of you out it's painful yeah. and uh you know it made me turn into a whiny little <laughs> um so that element and the fact that that went away sorted a lot of things out i still think that the gunplay um i'd love to see them that you can't reload if you're jumping that's one change i would love love mm, to see that's I mean, an interesting one Right, so yeah. if you want to reload your gun, you stay on the ground because hey, putting a musket into a pistol is meant to be fiddly anyway. Yeah. You definitely can't do it bunny hopping around like a madman. Do that, and suddenly the people that 
do that kind of thing are immediately uh, at a level playing field with those that can't. Um, I think that's the change I would make. Yeah, it's something that I notice in Destiny. Uh, when you go to reload your weapon, you slow down. You can't sprint while reloading your weapon. You can sprint, and then when you come back, you can then reload your weapon, but you can't do that. You can't just, you know, sprint or, or hop around too much and, and expect to be able to reload your weapon. Um, I like that take because I think it does something to where you have to you have to take into account your hits and you have to take into account your environment and if you can find a safe enough place. Like if I need to reload and I'm boarding a ship and I'm on there, I will generally run downstairs, like especially on like a brig or a sloop, um, to to try and bide myself that, that or you know, build myself that time to where I can reload and then get back up on top deck or wait for them to funnel down into the choke point where I can then, you know, shoot them and, and get a couple slashes and things like that. So yeah. It's it would be an inter- it would be a it would be a rough change for a lot of people. I think there'd be a lot of pushback on that, um, just based on how this how the the Sea of Thieves community plays. Uh, but I think that that would be that would be something where I think it would be worth testing and testing and testing and testing yeah. until until you you get that fine timing in there. Um, and if I, I, I think they've left it too long to do it now, I think you know you're right. Either they go for a really extended testing period where they really look at the data, and yeah. then they can justify a decision and ignore the people that might be screaming. But you've removed my ability to completely dominate because I'm better on a, as a, an FPS than see if please player two. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like you know it's now the, the gameplay and the combat style has become so ingrained that making these big changes is going to be a real tough journey for the average community of players Mm -hmm. yeah i agree i I think that's it's it's a good it's a good note to to, i think go out on um we've been we've been going for a while uh there's not a whole lot really that's really coming in here i'm gonna hit some of the minor points i think next episode uh which will give me an opportunity to listen to the podcast um but i i'm just i i wanted to to bring you on because i think that you you bring a refreshing view and in a much broader scope of um xbox perspective i would say to see Thieves. a lot of the see Thieves commentary that i get on here is mostly like just from a see Thieves perspective and we get to dabble a little bit in other games but at, with sure. xbox era john you've created an amazing community you've you've uh, really killed it as far as bringing really good perspectives to a lot of the reviews that i've read from your team um i really enjoyed the the forza review i thought it was really great uh worth the the 9.6 that you guys gave it um, yeah it's a great game I'm, I'm looking forward to to whoever gets to do the halo review and look at that because i think as as a as xbox era you guys aren't you guys are trying to be an ign without being an ign uh for now i'm sure that at some point you guys will get to that point oh uh, man it would, it would be cool <laughs> yeah i have no doubts uh, the the way that you guys are bringing in content and the way it looks the way it approaches it looks beautiful it, it's it's good review uh, or it's well oh, reviewed so i'm i really I'm sure appreciate you guys that man yeah, yeah I, I really appreciate that. And I have to give a shout out to, you know, I am I am very fortunate to have an absolutely incredible team um, of people that uh, are just, you know, I think that they're part of the gaming culture that exists today in that they just love video games. You know, it, it's, <laughs> this is not a job, you know, we're, yeah. we're lucky in that this isn't our main job, but we come at it from a place of passion. We're always objective. Um, and um, I feel very privileged to be able to work alongside them and, you know, and, and kind of be this guiding voice to, to, to our, you know, our global takeover of everything. Um, it's, <laughs> it's been an incredible journey and it's been an absolute pleasure being able to actually come on and talk specifically about Sea of Thieves because it's a game I love, but it's just not something every time Sea of Thieves is brought up on my podcast, it's like, oh, Sea of Thieves tangent from my co-host. And, you know, it's kind of quickly moved on from. So I really take uh, great, I'm very grateful to you for having me on and being able to talk about it and bounce some different ideas back and forth. You know, I've heard things today that, um, you know, I, I hadn't thought about before from a from an idea perspective. And it's, I have to admit, I'm a little bit like I might message the crew and see if maybe we can jump back on the waves next week. You know, I know it's a busy time of year, but... I haven't mm-hmm. played in a while. Maybe for the Festival of Giving, I'll come back in for all of those triple triple legendary crates, you know? Yeah, I, I know that uh, soon we're going to be getting, and especially as someone who likes to PvP, uh, definitely in the next month or two, we're going to be getting those um, Gilded Voyages. And a lot, That's the of people, one I want. a lot of people love those Gilded Voyages. So I'm sure Find that you'll up. probably have some fun with that too. 
Um, there's plenty of stuff to check out over at Xbox Era. And if you're into Halo, if you're into Forza or Guardians of the Galaxy or any of the games that have been coming out in this season, there's a great place to go check out that content and make sure that you're keeping up to date with what's good, what's bad, what to invest in, and just to get some good, good opinions from some really smart people. So, uh, John, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for, for sharing your experience. Uh, hopefully when the next update comes out, um, you have a much better experience with the, the tall tales, so. uh, so that we don't have to come back and, and do this all again. And in, in this way, I would love to have you back on, uh, next time to, to be able to talk about something that you're just absolutely in love with and, and just really, really just dig into the content. It'd be my pleasure, my friend. Awesome. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Pirates, I'm going to do the regular outro that I usually do. And we'll see you all in a bit. All right, Pirates, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you again to Dead Eye Dre and John Clark for joining me this episode to talk with some more about Sea of Thieves. Uh, I did get one four star or no, excuse me, five star review from Job7. Uh, and they just said, I love it. Would recommend uh, five stars. So thank you very much for that. If you guys want, you can always head over to iTunes uh, or excuse me, Apple Podcasts. I think is what they call it now. And uh, leave your review as well, five stars if you want. If not, just rate it however you want. Let me know what is what is going good with the show, what's not. Uh, other than that, Pirates, if you want to get a hold of me, head over to Twitter at C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N. You can always leave me an email at C-A-P-T L-O-G-U-N at gmail.com. Or head over to the Discord server. You can always leave me a Discord message or join the Discord to talk to other Pirates who are in there as well. And I did get a message on Twitter uh, this one actually, let me see if I can find it real quick. I got it from the worst mate over at theworstmate.com, who recently released a shanty collection for uh, Sea Thieves. It's mostly just a bunch of different shanties that he created. Uh, he wrote in to me and said, "Hey, Captain, uh, what would it take to get your you to promote my album on stream, the podcast, or other socials?" Uh, I'm new to the influencer game, so I don't know what people expect. Uh, I'm sure it's based on the level of promotion and audience size. So hopefully just asking you, uh, your rate is an appropriate tactic. Uh, I think you'd like my shanty album and I wouldn't have asked. Uh, I love the podcast. Keep up the great work, Paul. Um, so I went ahead and I actually listened to the 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 actual um, album and it's good. If you want, you can head over to theworstmate.com forward slash shanty dash collection dash four dash the C. I'll leave a link in the show notes um, so make it a little bit easier for you. And uh, they're good. You can listen on Spotify, YouTube Music, Apple Music, Amazon Music, or Bandcamp if you want. Uh, right now it's free and he's just trying to promote it for there. So there's about 12 different, uh, 12 different shanties in there. Um, if I remember correctly, I think I liked Strike the Bell the most. I think that was the one that I enjoyed. Uh, that one and I Deserve the C. Those were, I think, my two favorite ones. But Good old shanties. Uh, if you're looking for some more uh, music to listen to that isn't necessarily from Sea of Thieves or the Longest Johns. And with that, Pirates, I think that's going to do it. Thanks for all the, the love, all the sharing that you're doing of this, all the listening and feedback that you're giving me. The feedback is important because it helps me craft the show. Uh, I'm hopefully going to have some good guests in the future if I can get those together. And next episode, I'm going to be able to listen to the Sea of Thieves podcast and make sure that I can give some feedback on what's going on. I know that there's a, a new book coming in, so I know Chris Alcock is working on that. Uh, but I do want to hear what actually was going on in the podcast. So I'll cover that and some more notes because I already have some issues with uh, some of the patch notes after playing today versus what I when I actually recorded this. So more of that in the future. Pirates, thank you. I love you and I look forward to sailing with you on the Sea of Thieves. at Robots Radio get a lot of questions from people who are interested in starting their own podcasts about how they can start, how they can grow their audiences, how they can create good content, even what microphone to use and what software to use, things like that. Well, 
we're changing things up at Robots Roundtable to talk and share about the things that we've learned, the things that work and the things that don't. We're sharing with you our actual real world experience. How can you launch a show like the Fallout Lorecast and get as many listeners as we did early on and rock it to the top of the charts on Apple Podcasts? How do you create a show in such a crowded marketplace as it is today, as opposed to 10 years ago? We're getting together every week to share our answers with you. Just look up The Podcast Professor. A Robots Roundtable with the hosts from Robots Radio. Following is a public service announcement from the Starter Set Dungeons & Dragons podcast. This is your D&D campaign. This is the Starter Set Podcast. You know how, like, poison frogs don't lick each other's backs? So it's Howl's Moving Castle mm-hmm. with a face. Mm. Hey there, I'm Great Mandibles. Because <laughs> one of the party speaks abyssal. You're all going to die. <laughs> and then adventure falls into your lap. Plop. This is your D&D campaign after listening to the Starter Set Podcast. <laughs> So join Sam and Ed every Friday on the Starter Set Podcast for prime Dungeons & Dragons content. Any questions?